Stopping at an intersection seems like such a simple thing to do on a motorcycle. All you have to do is pull up and stop, right? Well, this week on MC Rider, we'll look at some common mistakes that many riders make when stopping at intersections. Well, many riders hear topics related to road strategy. They think that a particular strategy on its own will not have much impact on their overall safety. But if you can adopt one new strategy that makes you 1% safer on the road, or 10 new strategies, you begin to see how they start to have a real impact on your ability to avoid hazards on the road. The best riders on the street rarely have to use their evasive techniques because their strategy keeps them out of bad situations to begin with. I hear people all the time talking about how dangerous riding a motorcycle is because other cars do not respect motorcycles. And for riders who think that, I want to challenge you to look at your own road strategy and see if there are simple changes that you can make to keep those bad situations from occurring in the first place. Many riders hear road strategy tips and they think that a particular strategy is such a small thing. And sometimes it is, but when that tip is combined with many others and applied over the lifetime of the rider, they become very significant. So today let's look at some tips for navigating intersections, red lights and stop signs, and we'll break this down into three parts. What to do when you stop, what to do while you're stopped, and what to do after you stop. So what to do when you stop. When I pull up to a stoplight at an intersection, my practice is the motorcycle's in first gear by the time I stop. I squeeze in the clutch. I complete the stop using mostly the rear brake. This allows the motorcycle to remain more balanced through the stop. And my left foot goes to the ground first. The motorcycle stays in first gear until I leave the intersection. Rarely put my right foot on the ground. Are there times when both feet go to the ground? Yes, but that is the exception. Some things that might cause both feet to go to the ground at a stop is if there's an extremely strong side wind or an uneven surface, or maybe I didn't make a picture perfect stop and I need that right foot to keep the motorcycle in balance. But in general, I keep my right foot on the rear brake, my hand wrapped around the throttle in case I need to pull away quickly. Some comments I hear about this strategy is, won't you wear out the clutch by keeping it squeezed in at a stop? Well, the short answer to that is no. A little bit longer answer is you're disengaging the plates. So think of this as clutch plates when you squeeze in the clutch. You're disengaging those plates. So sitting at a stoplight, you're not placing any wear on the clutch plates. Another one I hear is that my hand gets tired keeping the clutch squeezed in. My answer to that is to keep doing it and your hand will get used to it. After a while, the muscles build up and keeping the clutch squeezed in is not an issue. Think of it as building your motorcycle muscles by being able to keep that clutch squeezed in. So next, let's look at what you do while you're stopped. As we discussed, you should keep the motorcycle in gear ready to move, knowing what traffic behind you is doing, and having an escape path planned in case they do not stop. Too many riders stop at a red light, motorcycle goes into neutral, the hands are off the handlebars, and they're looking around to see who's noticing their cool motorcycle. If you're not aware of what's happening behind you, you're at the mercy of whatever does happen behind you. Stay alert and aware. The motorcycle in gear and make sure it's ready to move. Make it a habit that anytime you apply the brakes to make a quick glance in the mirrors to see if someone is coming up behind you. Common comments I hear about this is, well, what about at longer stops like getting stopped by a train? Well, in those situations, I think it's okay to shift to neutral once a car or two comes to a complete stop behind you. But you need to remain aware of what's happening behind you as cars approach. And often when I'm at a standstill, 
I'll flash the brake light. So I'll squeeze and release that front brake just to help them see that I'm stopped and that I'm sitting there. So our third tip or point is what to do after you stop. So now the light's changed and it's time to go. All you have to do is release the clutch and roll on the throttle, right? Well, wrong. I often see drivers and riders pulling into the intersection as soon as the light turns green. After all, I do have the right of way, but that can be a deadly mistake on a motorcycle. Have you ever seen someone blatantly run a red light or a stop sign? Maybe they were in a hurry, distracted, or they just didn't see the light. Regardless of the reason, any driver who's been riding for any length of time has seen a driver run a red light or a stop sign. And if we're honest, most of us have done this ourselves. In a car, the driver who pulls out in front of the driver running the red light is most often involved in a crash. The motorcyclist who makes the same mistake is often involved in a fatality crash. I have an intersection near my house with a traffic light intersecting a two-lane highway. We have two or three serious crashes there a year, usually due to this exact circumstance. A driver who has a green light rushes into the intersection, and a driver who is not paying attention runs the red light broadsiding the other car. To my knowledge, none of these have been fatality crashes, but that's also because I'm not aware of any motorcycles being involved in those crashes. You hear me say this all the time on MC Rider. Never put your safety in the hands of another driver. At some point, they will let you down. Take responsibility for your own safety, and one simple way that you can do that is to make sure that the cars around you are going to stop before pulling into the intersection. We'll be discussing this and other related topics on the forums, and you can join us there by supporting the channel at mcrider.com support. In addition to the forums, you'll get access to the field guide, where I have exercises that you can use to increase your skills on any open parking lot. Till next week, guys, it's Ken with MC Rider, and I'll see you on the road. There are multiple ways to support the channel. You can become a member on YouTube at mcrider.com slash member or support the channel through Patreon at mcrider.com slash support. Either way, you'll get full access to the forum and the field guides, which will further the training that we release here on a weekly basis.